Almighty God, who forgives all and truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the glory together, glory to God in the highest. <laughs> Oh, Lord, 
reading this morning is from Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. There will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Stand for the Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When the wise men had departed, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt have I called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled. Because they are no more. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There has always been a problem with migrants. At least migration has always, for many, seemed to cause a problem. Whether it's because of food or lack of food, war, disputes, fights, or just lack of space, people have always moved around the globe in search of a better place to live. Perhaps the difference now is that it's more visible because of social media, because of mass media, we can see what is happening around the world. And maybe it's also now happening faster than it ever did before. Last Wednesday was the International Refugee Day. But I must admit that would have completely passed me by if it wasn't for the things which have been happening in the US which have brought this issue to the fore. Every week or every day seems to be the international day of something or the international week of something else. So that I think if we had a calendar of those, they would just overlap with how many fall on each day of the week. But this year, or at least this week, and it probably is only this week that it's making the head of the news, refugees and migrants have been all over media and social media. <coughs> It's unusual when you look at Facebook to see 
different sorts of posts. Well, that's quite usual, but for me it was so unusual to see so many on one topic. Again and again, people posting and posting and saying and commenting and posting. It's not just in the US where this has been a big issue. At the moment, just this last week, in Germany, Hungary and the Czech Republic, there has been political disputes and arguments about what to do with refugees, what to do with migrants coming in to Europe. We've seen this week ships being forbidden to land in Malta and Italy, and eventually Spain saying they could land there with full of refugees. Just this week, as I was preparing the sermon, I heard that more than 200 men, women and children were drowned in the Mediterranean this week. And just this morning as I was listening to the midnight news on the BBC, there's another ship full of 200 people being refused anywhere to dock in the Mediterranean. And those of us who are English are not immune from this for the whole Brexit thing partly was to do with people's fear of foreigners and too many of them coming into the country. According to The Guardian, 68.5 68 million people are refugees around the world. The biggest number that there's ever been. And UNICEF says half of them are children. But as I said, this is really, in many ways, nothing new. Perhaps we can say the first refugees in the Bible were Adam and Eve when they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden and were wandering over the face of the earth. And then again, when we hear the story of Abraham, how he left, and perhaps not as a refugee, he left his home and went abroad at the call of God to go to another land. But at some points in his pilgrimage, he was a refugee and fled into Egypt because of famine in Canaan and because of the need for food. And so even through the Bible, we see stories of refugees. Joseph's family indeed went into Egypt because of the famine. They went, first of all, just to ask for some food to take home, but when they eventually found that Joseph, their brother, was there, the whole family moved as migrants and settled in Egypt. 400 years later, Moses led the people of Israel out as political refugees, escaping from the tyranny of Pharaoh. So refugees and migrants are nothing new in this world. And of course, as we saw in our Gospel reading, Jesus himself was a political refugee. <clears throat> he fled from his homeland where he was born, or his father took the whole family to Egypt because of fear of persecution. When we look around the world, we see so much and so many problems. Vista's just back from Rwanda, and she will know much more about this than I do, but they had the problem, the Hutus killing the Tutsis, and in Burundi, I think it was the reverse, and it was just a total disaster. People who lived alongside each other for hundreds, possibly thousands of years, suddenly killing their neighbor because of fear. South Sudan is something I know more about from having lived in Egypt for many years. We had many South Sudanese refugees there. That's still one of the biggest refugee populations in the world. And there, again, a lot of the problem was with the northern government, but also the fight between the tribes of the Nuer and the Dinka. And in the church where I worshipped St. Andrews, we had seven different congregations. And I think three or four of them were Sudanese. And one was Nuer, and one was Dinka. And one was all the Sudanese together. But these divisions between people lead to so many problems. We can look to Europe and the former Yugoslavia just about 20 years ago when Muslims were killing or being killed by Serbs. Croats were killing Serbs and Serbs were killing Croats. And people who lived alongside each other suddenly became enemies. The response to any of us, of all of us, must be either perhaps to kill, or to fight, or to flee. And so many people choose perhaps which is the best option in many ways is to flee, to go to a place of safety. Well, am I going to present a solution to the world's problems this morning? 
probably not. But as Christians, we can at least pick up the pieces. At least we can try to make the world a better place. At least we can try to do the small amount which we can do. This week we've seen a mass outcry against one part of one country's migrant population policies. But what will we do when the media spotlight has moved on in two or three weeks' time? The church does not always have a good history on these sort of issues. Many churches supported slavery and many Christian leaders spoke in favor of slavery, saying it's biblical and so we should keep on with it. But others did risk their lives. In the United States, having the Underground Railroad and getting escaped slaves up to Canada and up to the north where they could escape from their bondage. What can we do? What can we do to make the world a better place? So, especially if we're in Thailand, because we sometimes seem so far away from these problems, although I know many people in our congregation are working with people directly who are in these situations. Well, first of all, we are called on as Christians not to lose hope. And I think that's a very, very strong and key thing we have to do, especially as we support those in our congregation who are working directly, like Caitlin's husband John, working with the Rohingya directly in Bangladesh on the Myanmar border. We have to encourage one another not to lose hope. For the promise we have from the scripture when we read Revelation today is that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. There will be a time when there will be no more crying and no more death and no more pain. And although maybe that is a, is a vision of, of a future, it's still a vision we should hold on to that things can get better. Secondly, we need to speak out. Speaking out sometimes has negative consequences. <coughs> sometimes we can fear deportation, losing of jobs, even being sent to jail. But at other times, it may not have any <coughs> dangerous or life-threatening consequences. But we can still lose friends, we can still upset people by speaking out when we feel we must. And sometimes we have to do that. <coughs> sometimes on Twitter and Facebook things get so angry that it's best just to withdraw. But at the same time, it's important when someone puts something <coughs> that you believe is wrong that you do challenge that view. But as I said before, Matthew 7, 6 is the best verse for Facebook and Twitter, which is don't cast your pearls before swine. <laughs> when it gets to that stage when it's just becoming a fight back and forwards, then there's time just to withdraw. Don't keep fighting and fighting and fighting because you're getting nowhere. And you'll just get yourself more upset and more angry, and the other person too. But at the same time, there's time when it is right to share. As we, one of the lines in the hymn we'll sing later, if we don't speak, then who? So the first thing is do not lose hope. The second thing is speak out. And the third thing I've got on my list is act. Do something. Don't just speak but act. Now we're not always in a position where we can act. We can speak, we can all speak, but sometimes we're not in a physical position where there's something physically we can do. And yet, for some of them in the congregation here, there is, and some of us I know who I've spoken to, their families, their friends back home are already acting and helping people in a practical, physical way. But we can support them, we can take care of them, we can encourage them in whatever way we can. And when we're presented with the opportunity to act, maybe to shelter someone in our own homes, then we can do it. But sometimes we will lose comfort we do so. So the first thing is don't lose hope. The second is speak out. The third is act. And the fourth I have on my list is pray. For praying by lifting things to God, we make ourselves stronger. We give ourselves more hope and more understanding. And in ways perhaps we can't understand, we make others stronger too. Even if they don't know we're praying for them, somehow people can be uplifted just from the fact that we pray. 
the quote we had this morning from Matthew was about when Jesus fled into Egypt and all those children had been killed. And the quote ends in a very negative way. If we read the passage again, it begins, or it ends, to find where it is, from Jesus' words, or rather the words of Matthew. A voice was heard in Mama, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted, because they are no more. But that's not the end of the quotation. If we look in Jeremiah, it continues. She refuses to be comforted for her children, because they are no more. But thus says the Lord, keep your voice from weeping, and your eyes from tears. For there is a reward for your work, says the Lord. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope for your future, says the Lord. Your children shall come back to their own company and to their own country. Sometimes things seem impossible. Sometimes the problem seems beyond a solution. But yet there is hope. And I strongly believe, and I'm sure we all hold that together, that if we do work together across the world, then with God, nothing is impossible. 68 million refugees, but that's only 1% of the population of the world. 99% of people aren't refugees. It's not an insoluble problem. And as we ask God to guide us and to guide our world, we can pray that the world will in this way, in this issue, will become a better place. stand as we say our creed together. You, O oh God, are too sweet and holy. holy. You create our world and give, give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You, you are God. God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous. You are beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are our God. Amen. Our first hymn this morning was written in the 15th century. Our next hymn was written this week. And we're sing when Jesus went to Egypt.
prayers of intercession. Your powerful presence comforts us, O God. For when we are threatened by chaos and storm, Christ is our peace. Hear us as we call to you and answer our prayers. You are a refuge in time of trouble. You never forsake those who seek you. <laughs> Loving God, your church works together with Christ to accept your grace for all people. For us, with purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and your godly power, that there may be no fault found with our ministry. You are a refuge in times of trouble. You never, never forsake those who see you. Almighty One, you are known by your acts of justice. Let your goodness be sustained by all who hold authority in the nations. We pray for the royal family of Thailand. Let not the ungodly have the upper hand, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. You are a refuge in times of trouble. You never forsake those who seek you. Your peace dwells continually at the center of our being, O Rachel. Give peace to all those whose lives are swamped by waves and winds, and defend those who face giant threats, so they can follow the comfort of your presence and face their troubles with David's courage. You are a refuge in times of trouble. Help us to commend ourselves in this community, our community, with hearts wide open to our neighbors, for your name's sake. You are a refuge in times of trouble. You never, never say say those who see you. Compassionate God, at an acceptable time, you have listened. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Hear our prayers for those whom we ask intercession, especially those we mention now, either silently or aloud. We pray for Debbie, who has a broken rib, and Marilyn, who is handling David's will in the States. We pray for Diane Carano, who has a continuing fight with cancer. Receive our prayers for all children <coughs> who go to slumber tonight without safety and security. For those separated from their parents due to global strife and government actions. And those who are hungry, lonely, or frightened. We remember those in America, Rohingya, and in Bangladesh, Syrians and Iraqis in Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, and Europe, Somalis, Eritreans, and others displaced in Africa. In the 250, a ship looking for a port in the Mediterranean. And we pray for those in our congregation working with orphaned or displaced children, for Bill and Richard volunteering in orphanages here in Shanghai, for John working with the Rohingya and other needy children in the region, for Krista working against human trafficking, and for others in their own work of service. We tell of all your praises and rejoice in your salvation as we bring our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving, especially for those blessings we receive. 
ですよ Praying into your eternal peace, those who have died. Especially those mentioned aloud or silently to you. To 200 refugees drowned this week in the Mediterranean. My friend Nora Castle in Bangkok. You are a refuge in times of trouble. You never, never save those who seek you. Gracious and loving Father, be known to us in the storms and anxieties of our lives. That we may hear the call of our Savior, Savior saying, Peace, be still, still, and may be calm in his presence. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, may you live in that way, one more God, forever and ever. Amen. Stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let's give one another a sign of peace.
of your hearts. Let them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in his right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy One, Heavenly Ruler, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For Christ is your living Word, through whom you created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Christ, born of a woman, dying upon the cross, raised from the dead and exalted to your right hand on high, you have freed us from the slavery of sin. Through Christ you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Now and forever. 
Awesome. We beg this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
direction to all people. Um,
then we've got tea and coffee and other drinks following the service. We're going for lunch together somewhere. And let me say thank you for coming and God bless you. And as we go, let's take the blessing of God and his love to the world. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.